Hello, my brothers and sisters, my friends, people that have heard the first part of this testimony. I'm now going to get into the meat of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to get into how the Lord healed me of lupus and environmental illness, Epstein-Barr virus, chronic fatigue syndrome, the list was long, beloved, complete immune dysfunction, no immune system. We're going to talk about that. And how that all happened was through violent faith. You know, God just came into my life. I was going to kill myself because I was so sick. Dr. Tommy Gong died. Just part one. I'm not going to go over that. But what happened was God would heal me. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ likes to heal us. And he does it, does it through deliverance, does it with healing. You know, people have gotten healed in so many ways. But you know what happens? A lot of people lose their healing because they don't know how to stand. So this is what God finally said to me. He'd heal me, I'd lose it, he'd heal me, I'd lose, lose, lose. My daughter, you will never have anything. You will always lose it. Because your problem is not this illness, these illnesses, your body, your immune system. Your problem is powerlessness. Victimization. A lifetime of victimization. That is your problem. How we're going to solve this problem is you're going to lay the idols down. You're going to lay every bow that you've ever made in your life down. Doctors, foods, chemicals, people. You're going to lay it down. Amen? Lay the idols down. That's real healing. And you're going to step out in violent faith and confront. Take your territory. You're going to step out in violent faith with your spiritual authority, <laughs> amen, divine rights, spiritual authority, and violent faith. Well, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get this healing I've been losing. You hear that from God. You know, hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to get it. I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be free. Thank you, Jesus. I go to bed. I get up. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh. There's something missing here. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> uh, excuse me. <laughs> Lord, um, the violent faith and spiritual authority part? Well, you know, I don't have that. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's when the real healing began. That's when the teachings began. And God taught me the faith of the Spirit. The faith of the new creature in Christ. The new creature in Christ has a different kind of faith than what we think is faith in religion, what we're taught. Religious faith makes a little show of something to look good, like, oh, I hurt my arm, so I'm going to, I can't, I'm in so much pain, but I'm going to lift my iPhone. <laughs> Amen. Religious faith says, I'm going to lift a two-pound weight. <laughs> I'm going to do what I can't do. I'm not making fun of people because I've been there myself. I'm just saying, this is how we're taught to think. And this is why we're not being healed. Beautiful people who love the Lord step out in faith, but they step out in religious faith. Mm, the faith of man, not the faith of God. God sees faith. This is how God sees your faith. This is how God saw my faith. Somebody with nothing who could have barely eat was allergic to the world, no immune system, every disease known to man. How did he see my faith? He looked at me and he said, this woman is the new creature in Christ, redeemed. And she's going to take it, as he said to me, with her spiritual authority and divine rights. Enough! And then nothing will ever be taken from her again. That's what he said to me, that nobody or anything will ever be able to take anything from you again. So I had to learn and now you're going to learn. So when you step out in faith, you're not deceived. Amen? Because when the Lord gets the body of Christ to step out in violent faith, everything is going to change. He likes to call it divine retaliation. Divine retaliation is upping the ante on deception, upping the ante on fear and doubt. You know, the flesh has fear and doubt and triggers and memories and the past and abuse and the blah, 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 blah. But the spirit doesn't have these things. The spirit has spiritual authority <laughs> and divine rights and is able to bring the flesh that has all these issues. The flesh has illness, 
Yes. The flesh has depression. The flesh has victimization. The flesh has all kinds of whatever it picks up and wants to give you. It has. It has all these things. But the spirit is healed. The issue is your spirit is healed, but your flesh is not healed. Your spirit has divine health and divine rights. And that's who you are. Who you truly are in your holy identity is the spirit person. The righteousness of God in Christ and the righteousness of God in Christ takes the lamb by faith, lie in faith. So I'm going to give you with my testimony a little bit of how violent faith worked for me. So there I am. God called me a victim, powerless victim. Amen. And that's why I lose my healing. Amen. You know, I thought, honestly, I thought it's because I don't know anything. I don't understand. But it was because I wasn't exercising and demonstrating who I was. I didn't know who I was. But I was about to find out. Amen. So let's say I'm a person allergic to all food. You know, pick anything. Pick, pick a, um, uh, I like to use a carrot. Let's pick something different. I'm tired of using the carrot. Let's pick a string bean. I'm violently allergic to string bean and every other vegetable. Well, pick broccoli. Pick a broccoli, okay? I'm going to explain the difference. And I had to do this with every food because I was allergic to all foods. They call it a universal reactor. Broccoli, corn, potatoes, eggs, every food. Fish, chicken, steak. I did this with you name a food, water. I reacted to water. I used to get blisters in my mouth, go down for days. Lousy glass of water. I used to rotate waters from all over the world. I thought, in my mind, believe that I had to do that. I read that somewhere online. That's what you do when you're allergic to water. You, you know, you have a system. <laughs> you know, the mind is very resourceful. It has systems with the internet. It's like it go forever. It's got ways. It's got ways to do things. It's got ways to be non-toxic, you know, keep everything pristine and organic and microbiotic and plant-based. I did it all until this is what I had to do. If I couldn't eat one string bean, I couldn't eat anything, get a reaction. Two string beans, terrible reaction. Three string beans, oh, throw up, headache, backache, depression. Four string beans, I could maybe go into anaphylactic shock, you know, just, ooh. Four string beans, I don't think, I'm not, I'm not going there. This is what God showed me. This is incredible. Because this is, a, this is a, just a little way to, sh to show it. That's true for everything. Cancer. Where'd you give your power away? Amen. Before the doctors get you now, where'd you give your power away? Take it back. In Jesus' name, in violent faith. Violent faith. Where was the battle? Let's be real. You know, to get healed, you're going to have to be real with God. Me, I gave it away everywhere, so I didn't have to get, you know, really picky about it. Lousy string bean. If I ate 10 string beans that I honestly believed was going to kill me. Amen. That could kill me. If four can get me out of like ten, you know, what chance do I have? Amen. I had to say to that flesh, I had to believe in my mind. I had to look at it and say, everything I did, I had to get right here. To, what I'm going to share with you, I had to get a broccoli, a string bean, a chemical, spray paint. I had to spray pesticide. Whatever the chemical, whatever the fear was, whatever it had, the fear, the belief, the threat, Amen. The trigger, the trauma, the past. It had plenty. Imagine what it had if you're allergic to everything on earth, if you have no immune system, if you have lupus, 17 bar of rice, five minutes illness, no, no thyroid, nothing, <laughs> organ damage. It had a lot. Toxic mercury in the mouth, don't forget about that. The tests, all the tests showed, oh yes, my doctor, a good man, was so convinced about the mercury. We get that out of your mouth. You get all that toxicity out. He had the blood work. Oh, you! I had every sign of the person that was dying of mercury toxicity. We got it all out of my mouth. All I got was less teeth. Everything crumbled. They had to put more in the end. In the end, I'm going to give you a divine retaliation testimony while it's up. We'll go back to the string bead. They took all these fillings out of my mouth. All my, I mean, years old mercury. Nothing wrong, some bridge, electromagnetic current, the bridge, all the gentle toxic belief, okay? Took it all out. Oh, I went home. That was like my last treatment because I, it was such an offense to my spirit and my heart. I didn't know any better. I was trying to get well. 
I went home and lied down, and I thought, ah, it was just total despair. And of course, this is what they say, it's a good sign you've had a healing crisis. But I never got out of the bed again, the healing crisis. Don't buy that one, okay? Don't buy the healing crisis. You had a, you had a faith crisis. You had a, hey, get it crisis. You had a wake-up call, not a healing crisis. When you get healed, you get healed. Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. He is the great physician, the great healer, the great psychiatrist. More importantly, he's the fourth man in the fire. And that's where we're going to go to get healed. Amen? Glory to God. Anyway, the cage and the teeth, everything. So I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but as I started to grow in my violent faith and understand the premise and what I had to do, you know, to get healed, to become who I am, my only identity, me. I mean, at some point I had to deal with the teeth. I'm avoiding the teeth a little bit, you know, scary stuff. Put all that mercury back in my mouth. I go and see a dentist. I was living in Santa Barbara at the time, a very nice man. Mostly a holistic kind of dentist. That's what they have there. This is so God. He, I, I went to him because I know he's honest. Um, and I couldn't go to anybody that would have taken the mercury out because, you know, they would be afraid to put it back in. Amen. They had belief in it like I had. So here's a man, honest man, and he looked at all my mouth and he said, Julian, I have to say something to you that I've never had to say to another human being. And I don't like to say it and I don't like to work like this, but this is all I can do for you. He said, because you've had these fillings out for so long, the holes in your mouth, they're like caves, they're so big. Ordinarily, I would fill it with porcelain, ceramic, you know, something more gentle. I don't like to work with that mercury. Here comes God. But in your case, Juliana, I'm going to have to put in three times the amount of mercury that you originally had. This is what God calls divine retaliation. This is a perfect example. Upping the ante on deception. Put your faith down. That wasn't religious faith. If I'm going to put in three times the amount of mercury, I better have some violent faith or that flesh is going to talk me into a mental institution. <laughs> but it's not going to be the dentist putting it in. <laughs> okay. You know what? I looked at him and I said, Doctor, I know that's God. Amen? Now, I went in to do it. I mean, you know, I got up. <laughs> I knew it was God. I didn't know it was God, but... Let me tell you, I rode, I rode around the block to the dentist's office. I got lost. I'm like, you know, I know it's God, but there's a little uh, attack in that, right? I put my little speakers on. I got my praise music going. And let me tell you what happened in that dental office. The anointing of God was so strong, he felt it. The presence of the Lord in that room. Hallelujah. It was beautiful. It was, you know what? Anytime I went to the dentist to get that, any of that work restored, it was a high. It was like a, a, a symphony of Jesus. Amen. He was there, the fourth man of the fire. Everybody would feel it. Like, oh, you can go to the dentist. What's this about? The dentist felt it. And since then, other dentists feel it. I have like, uh, you know, dental favor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because I had violent faith for the dentist. Oh, yeah, every quarter, every, I do a whole quarter of time, every time I go back to the body, the whole mouth was restored, the best that it could be under the circumstance. Um, but I can chew, I can eat, I have teeth, and uh, every time I would go, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Every time I would go to do another quarter, I uh, would get another healing. I remember the first time I would go to do another quarter. The next day, I always wore a little back brace because of the whatever, structural, blah, blah, blah. You know? mm -hmm. I got up and I forgot to put the little thing on, the little belt that helped me. Because I didn't need it. Now, what did the back have to do with my teeth? Absolutely nothing. My power was increased. My strength, my spirit was up. The flesh couldn't take my back. Amen. Flesh couldn't take my back. Hallelujah. <laughs> Every time I went. Now, 
First time I went the next day, I felt sensitive to the mercury. I did, I'm gonna be honest, because you could get symptoms. And I would went to my bathroom, touch things, you know, just to get dressed. And who was trying to tell me the mind talks to you? It says, oh, it's like chemical seeping through your finger. I said, then let it seep. Because it's not coming out. It's not coming out. How could I take it out? Elena, I can't take it out. It's out of the question. I already died there. What's the purpose? Amen. Next day was gone. Back is healed. Sensitivity gone. High. Flesh decreased, I increased big time with the teeth. Amen. God had me throw that one in because it's a good one. Because a lot of people do that. They go now, they believe in these toxic things. The whole belief was about toxicity, the immune system toxicity. And right now, I, I'm making this in the middle of the pandemic. You know, I'm back with the masks and the gloves and all this, and everybody's walking around like that. And, you know, I just can't go there, beloved. I just can't go there. Because I know you listen to that news and you watch that all day long, what the mind can create illnesses and fears and doubt and isolation. What that can create, the, the, this is nothing, you know, could take you out. Amen. And fear and doubt, the news, all that going in, feeding yourself. You've got to renew your mind all day long in these times with your holy identity, with who you are, and step out. Take more territory. You need more territory right now than you've ever needed before to withhold that storm of flesh, that storm of self-exaltation, of flesh rising up, wanting to destroy, wanting to have power, control, politics. Amen. You can do this. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ did this for you. took this already. Now you're going to have to take it. All of us, we're going to have to take this one. Amen. And we'll be better for it. Flesh will decrease. It's just the flesh. It's just the flesh. Your spirit is healed. Nothing can come on it, beloved. Nothing can come on it, faith. You know, I think it was, um, who was the great healer? Anyway, I guess John Lake. I think he was running around one of these pandemic type things. <laughs> Flu. You know, whatever it was at the time. Amen. And he put it on his hand. He was there at the doctor. Put it on his hand. He said, the thing died on his hand. He was in so much faith. Amen. As you are. He had violent faith. You have violent faith. He was just told to move around in it. And now you're being told to move around it. To demonstrate it so you can be strong in it. Strong in it. Hallelujah. Remember the stream bean? <laughs> so any food. The stream bean. If I ate ten stream beans and I believed that the string bean, by the time I got to the mercury, I didn't believe it was going to kill me. I was a little, you know, scared. I didn't believe it. I knew by then. Amen. But the string bean, this is the beginning of the food. You know, they're taking the food back. I hadn't eaten. 60 pounds. Who eats? 10 string beans. I had to look at the mind, the thought, the carnal mind, enmity against God, fear and doubt. Self-righteousness, self-exaltation, trying to exalt itself about the power of God in my life. Amen. I surrendered. Now it's time for me to get a little spiritual authority over you. See, first you surrender. Then God gives you the spiritual authority. It's a press and beautiful walk with God. Okay, straight beans. I have to look at that mind and say, fear. I'd like to call it the imposter of my identity. Amen. The flesh. Try to be me because it can't live without me. It wants me to think it's me. If I believe it's me, then I'm out. Amen. Pretending to be something that is not me. But there's only one me. You've got to tell it there's only one me and you're not it. I'm me. And I'm the only one that thinks in this mind. One person, one thought, one authority under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And it ain't you. Amen. I'd have to look at it and say, you got string beans. Ten string beans, a can of string beans, two cans of string beans. You've got string beans and I've got the blood of Jesus. And I'm going to use as many of these as I have to to back you up. And you will bow. I'd have to get right here. The next line, I'd have to get right here with everything I took. Everything I took, I had to believe it, feel it, experience it, and get right to what I'm going to say now. Kill me if you can. Kill me if you can. You have string beans and I have the blood of Jesus. 
Oh, hallelujah. Let's rumble. <laughs> Let's rock. Yes, Lord. And I would eat. And he would bow. And I would eat. And it would bow. And you know what? If I couldn't back it up, I'd add something. Oh, string beans. I'll tell you what I really hated. Hated more than anything in the world. Bread. <laughs> because bread had candida, candida. From the yeast, yeast, I would have beliefs. Yeah, I had systemic candidiasis, of course. I had beliefs about candida. I almost had to pry out of my head with a can opener, okay? <laughs> Even the other people that had the same illness and environmental illness that lived in the mountains also knew I had a candida issue. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I mean, the yeast, candida, yeast bread, that was like... Big land for me. If I couldn't take something, I add that yeast bread. I'll add pizza. I'll add Coca Cola. You know, you gotta go all the way. I'll add pesticide. I've had to add. I moved into a house. Amen. You know, now I have teeth. Ah, look like a presentable. I have a mouth. I have food I can eat. I'm not 60 pounds, you know, 110 pounds. You coming back. Well, now I have to move to a house. I'm living in a, up in the mountains in a little wood, non-toxic, allegedly non-toxic place. Well, you know, come on, forgetting those things that are behind, pressing on to the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Well, what does that mean? That means I got to take the next territory. Now, by this time, I know something, and I know this is true with every fiber in my being. If I don't move ahead, doubt and fear are going to come in, the flesh, enmity against God, push me back, and then take what I have taken. It's cruel, but it's the way it is. Amen? You can go down all the way. I'm serious here. You could, you know, I can go down tomorrow. I could give up everything and stop taking land and just lie here and say, oh, I'm in a pandemic. All the world is coming to an end. There's burn, people burning businesses. I'm here in the middle of LA, sirens all night. You know, it's a stress. Oh, what's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. I'm taking territory. Hallelujah, Jesus. And you're going to take territory. And territory, your purpose, purpose is the answer to the problem. Yes, they say love is the answer to problem. And love comes with purpose. You know, if you're not in your purpose, who has love? You're down, you're in doubt, you're angry, you think you have no power over the flesh. The flesh doesn't have love. The flesh has hate, anger, self-righteousness. It doesn't look at people and say, I love you. Oh, look at them. I don't like that outfit. <laughs> she's skinny, she's fat. What'd she do with that hair? Oh my God. <laughs> All this division between races, that's not people. That's the flesh. People, people of divine love, the spirit being that God led every man that came to the world, came in the divine love for everybody. Nobody sees any of that. This is a, a demonstration of the flesh exalting itself. It's the power of God, divine love. Amen. Anyway, to have divine love, we have to have spiritual authority, be in the spirit, or we're faking it. Because that divine love isn't going to last. Something comes along, pushes you, and like, oh, what's she doing? <laughs> The spirit person has a great sense of humor. Amen. Sits back and says, oh, yeah, the flesh. Hallelujah. And goes over and, you know, deals with that person. Doesn't let things go. Deals with that person with love. Speaks the truth with love. Not let it go. Let it go is repression and oppression. It's a vow, honestly. God sees letting go is a vow. But speaking the truth with love is a fruit of the spirit. You know, sometimes we default when we don't we don't guard our heart as the spirit person the, the, the flesh naturally defaults to the, to the fruit of the flesh. Anger, rage. No, it's angry. Well, who's taking care of me? You, the spirit person, has to become the caretaker of your tempo. Amen? Hallelujah. Anyway, I was about taking the territory and with lion faith, upping the ante on every flesh, every chemical, I moved into the house. So finally, I go looking at houses. Well, we're talking about stepping out and taking territory and getting the attack. The house hunt was a miserable experience. Oh, my God. Oh, my 
can feel it when I talk about it. Feel it? Like, ooh, the house hunt, I'd walk in. Headache, nausea, sick for days. Why would you move into a house you can't walk into? I had one woman standing with me, Nellie, a woman in Florida. That's what it took. I was in Santa Barbara. She was in Florida. I had her on the phone. She had faith for it. She witnessed it. She said, no. She said, Juliana, yes. That's exactly what God wants you to do. He wants you to step out and move into a house. I said, Nellie, what, what kind of house should I move into? Just take what you like. Don't concern yourself with it. Take something you can afford and something that you like. Hello? What would you do if you were looking for a place? Take something you can afford and something that appeals to you, that you would enjoy living in. Oh, that was so foreign to me at the time. I was used to taking something without carpets, without paint, with, it hasn't been sprayed. It wasn't a dog or cat living there. You don't have to go through this list and take me a week to tell them what I needed. Anyway, Nellie, how can I move into a house that I can't walk into? Lord, how can I move into a house that I can't walk into? Neck pain, headache, back pain. Doubt for days, just, just down, just confused. You know, doubt. Should I, shouldn't I, praying. <laughs> All that. Until finally, you know, you have to take the territory. <laughs> you can pray and praise and call people, and, you know. All that. <laughs> and she might you just cut to the chase and take the territory. Because she's suffering for nothing. Amen. So, I had to believe that I, God would meet me there. I had to give up the place I was in, which was all I had, safe, non-toxic place. Take the few things that survived. I had a couple of paper bags with all my stuff. I had nothing. I had nothing. I, mean, I couldn't wear clothes. Nothing. I had nothing. A few little things I had gotten since my healing. And, uh, you know, nothing. A couple of bag, paper bags. Wasn't a big move. Didn't call movers. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I had to go the next step. Now I can call movers. Amen. I had to go the next step to could get a few possessions that wouldn't upset me. Amen. So I moved in. I moved in. By faith. By in faith. Because I couldn't go anywhere if this house, Lord, doesn't work. I can't go live in the street because of the mold. I can't go back to the other place because I gave it up. So that's it. If, if God doesn't meet me in this house, I'm dead. I've got nothing, nowhere to go. Nobody stay with nothing. I'm done. Okay, so I move in by faith. And I'm going to take it one room at a time. So I go to the bedroom, you know, bedroom in the back. It was quiet at least. But it had, you know, a lot of my alleged allergens. It had gas heat. Gas heat! <laughs> Press went on the wall! <laughs> If anybody's chemically sensitive, you get this. If not, it sounds really bizarre. But when you're chemically sensitive, you're allergic to all chemicals. And they have stories about them. The press wood gases off for years, years, longer than you're going to live. Especially with those beliefs. Oh, the gas heat. Carpets, you know, the formaldehyde gases off. Oh, you know, it had it all. It had a plethora of my allergens. Okay, so I started off in that room because the other rooms were worse. <laughs> anyway, normal bed, regular bed. It was a furnished place because I didn't have any furniture. The people were coming back in two months. I had two months to take the land, amen, to be able to move to another place. Amen. It was a summer rental. Okay, and I... Uh, I slept in bed, real bed, with a pillow. Hallelujah. And uh, by faith, amen, I put the gas heat on. I think, what the heck? I'm in. Rest wood on the wall. Pillow. <laughs> put the gas heat on. By faith. I went to sleep. I got up the next morning. I was bad. No God. Swollen like the elephant man. Swollen like this. 
big head of ice swollen, couldn't see, couldn't see, everything swollen, heavy, swollen. Oh my God, I tried to get up, I couldn't get up. I said, God, didn't me, God is not here. I'm not okay, I'm not healed, I'm not healed. I can't live here. This is my thoughts. I can't live here. I can't go out. What am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? I'm in a panic, panic, a doubt fest, fear and doubt fest. I told Nellie I would call her in the morning, the phone. I had to go to the other room to get the phone. Kitchen, not a living room. I couldn't walk, I was just... Anyway, I started to drag my body, like drag my body on the wall like this to get to the phone. Finally, I get to the phone. My eyes are so swollen. I'm so swollen in fear and doubt, I can't see. So I pick up the phone, I call the operator. I say, operator, I give the number. I have the number written down by the table, and then I gave the number, and Nellie answers the phone. I said, oh, I didn't even know she would be there. I said, Nellie, I, God didn't come. God didn't meet me. I'm going to die. I don't know what to do. She said, just pray with me, Juliana, pray in the spirit. I said, Nellie, you don't understand. This isn't like I have some kind of flu. I'm going to pray with you in the spirit. I have nowhere to go. God didn't meet me. I'm dying. I've never felt worse in my life. Now what? He's reading Psalm 1. Nellie was like, chill, okay? You couldn't move, Nellie. Nellie's reading Psalm 1. Yeah, Psalm 1. Ill-advised, I'd say so. As Nellie is reading Psalm 1, and every place I had gone that week, I would see one scripture. The entrance of thy word bringeth light. The entrance of thy word bringeth light. I look at my door. At first I hear something. I hear like a little something outside my door. I say, oh no, I don't need this right now. I can't take this. I can't take this right now. Somebody trying to come in my house when I'm dying. And Nellie on the phone reading Psalm 1. I'm cracking up. I'm in utter despair, crying. And somebody's at my door, a guest. No. It has my attention. So I'm looking at the door. I'm looking. The door is like this way, diagonal to where I'm sitting, straight like this, in this sort of dining living room area. And I look at the door. And light walks through my door. Ambulatory light. Light is walking through the hall. I'm watching light through the hall. Makes a turn, comes, and stands like this directly in front of me. And I realize that this light is the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the light of God. And the minute that I have that thought, the light of the Lord Jesus Christ goes through me like this and goes out the other side and leaves. Nothing was said. The entrance of his word brought light. I was healed. I could feel it. I'm jumping up and I'm not swollen anymore. I'm beautiful. I can feel it. Oh, I'm jumping up and down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just crazy. It's gone. The attack is gone. The despair is gone. The swelling is gone. And I'm ill. And Nelly, Nelly says, I feel the presence of God. She felt it. I said, Nelly, the Lord Jesus Christ just walked into my house, walked through my back, fell out at the other side, left them heal. Hallelujah. We're praising God, singing and dancing. Amen. And I was healed. I was healed, beloved, for that room. Amen. I was healed. I moved into the house, and God met me there. It was violent faith. It was big time faith. It was, I laid my life down. Amen. So healing violent faith is laying your life down. Well, believe it. You did say I wasn't really, because God showed me I didn't even have any of that. You know, it was the flesh. But I was dying to the flesh. I was laying the life of the flesh down so I could live. I was doing a spiritual takeover, which is what we have to do. We have to switch sides, take over that flesh, take over that body is my temple. I'm not my body. I'm not my body. I'm not my mind. I'm not my emotions. I'm the spirit person, and I'm in this. I'm, this is mine to, to have. It's alone. <laughs> A grace loan.
from the bank of grace. Amen? It's mine. I have authority over it. Amen? I have authority over it. With my spiritual authority and divine rights that I was given at my redemption, at the cross of Calvary, Jesus paid the price for my divine rights, my healing, my divine health, and spiritual authority. And if I settle for anything less, that I'm not who I am, I'm not, I'm not honoring the cross of Calvary. You know what real worship is to the Lord? Real worship to the Lord has taken the territory. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's worship. And look, is that say, I thank you. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. for, And I'm so grateful for what God did for me. You can only imagine. You know, give me life. Give me a better life. It took a lousy life, victim life. Generationally, you know, wrapped up, finished life. Amen. And made it a great spiritual life. Amen. A life with divine rights. Amen. A life that can be given in service unto the Lord. A life of divine love. Hallelujah. Divine health. Amen. Joy. Anyway, that was the healing of the house. Hallelujah. And there are many more healings. I'm going to continue. Let me see if I can now. Um, hallelujah. I think I'll continue at another time because they could be lengthy, break it up. And uh, the next healing will be, let me think what happened after that. Oh, room for room. Oh, yeah, the house. And then after the house, the moving back to L.A. And really then to where I am now. So we're going to get into all that, my whole story. And uh, you're going to learn and grow, and you're going to take territory, and you're going to be who you actually are. You know, my book is Becoming Who You Already Are, my latest book, Your Holy Identity. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to do Holy Identity Stand Groups. We're going to come together and demonstrate our violent faith and rise up, rise up, holding each other's hands in divine love taking the territory, taking our own personal territory, standing. You know, when I do a group of enforcing God's grace, everybody gets healed because you see a sister or brother get healed, and that builds your faith. Just imagine eight people. Everybody's building everybody's faith. After you see three people do it before, you go, oh, hello, it's so inspiring. Every, the anointing rises. The faith rises. The flesh is the only thing that doesn't rise. It comes under subjection. Amen. After we do that a little bit, beloved, and that grows, and that becomes who we are, the church, the world, then as we just get together in room praying, the world is taken. Amen. You know what I'm saying? The demonstration of violent faith. We're the Christ here on earth. We're what he has. The Christos in us. The Christ in us, our hope and glory, is the hope and glory right now, not only for our own survival, but the survival of the world. So God wants to get on with the pressing on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Join me. Amen. Join me in your personal purpose. I love you. God bless you. Amen.